Hey, everybody. Welcome to T-Ham 141 Homestead. I am Tracy. If this is your first time here, welcome. If it's your millionth time here, welcome back. Uh, you might hear in the background. Okay, my phones are going off over there saying, hey, you're live, dummy. Um, but you might hear my chicks going off in the background. I got 20 chicks this week. What can I say? The chicks dig me. <laughs> um, uh, and, and, um, yeah, a lot of exciting things happening. I got, uh, two chicks this week or 20 chicks this week. I got, uh, three pigs. One is Trevor's, two is mine way early this year because the butcher, uh, Miller's meat market in, uh, hey, how's it going, Darren? Um, Miller's Meat Market in uh, Watson, New York, uh, where we the butcher can't won't won't be able to get them in this fall. So we ended up getting them early. We they're bigger than normal. Um, that's what she said. Uh, they're bigger than normal. Um, they're three month old. And as soon as we took them out of the box, we gave them a dose of ivermectin, which is an anti-parasitical. Um, because I have had problems here with sick piglets. Uh, we've lost two or three of them over the years. And I figured, you know what? It'll be out of their system long before we butchered. Um, about, yeah. Um, uh, I think we have dates for July and August, butcher dates for July and August rather than, uh, late September and October. Uh, and that way, uh, we still get about the same time. We just got them earlier. Unfortunately, everything was going wonderful. 50 degree weather. It hasn't gone over. Uh, yeah, the high was 32 today. Um, and snow, I got about six or eight inches of snow on the ground. Uh, I don't have to plow uh, right away because it, it's just not enough. I can, I can pack that down. Trevor, uh, this Monday, I took my tractor trevor and i took my tractor down and my mom's driveway trevor owns my mom's uh uh trailer and so as the landlord he is you know he's got to take care of the driveway and stuff uh so we borrowed a dump trailer and took the um and, and, and brought in a bunch of gravel. The guy, the guy, I feel bad for the guy at the quarry. It was his first day on the job and nobody was showing this. Oh no, I don't dare that, 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 that would hurt. Be, you know, anything less than a foot. I just, I just don't dare do that <laughs> um darren you bring out the worst in me man <laughs> um but uh so as it was snowing we were having flurries we brought in the guy first gave him crushed stone with no powder and we want a driveway mix and <laughs> um and then um trevor i i told trevor i said trevor there is no no dust in this which the dust is what binds the rock together that makes that it's it's kind of a flexible but uh cohesive unit for the driveway and uh, so he 
told the guy and they ended up they ended up getting the, the right stuff but it was a lot smaller stones in it i wish it would have been with the uh with the dust but but the bigger stones um but uh yeah that took that took all day and then uh he's got some work to do uh he's got some stuff to do for a, a neighbor lady that that i help out miss grace um i help her with her garden every year putting a fence up around it to keep yeah, that would have been that would have been perfect. Um, this this I think was maybe half inch crusher run. It had a, a some three quarter to an inch in there, but it was mostly I, I'd say it was half inch that that he ended up bringing. Um, a little small for my taste, but it's a lot better than the mud swamp that Mom had this fall or this spring. Well, this winter, um, when it when it got um, really wet, uh, but yeah, uh, Trevor dropped a cherry tree for her, and he's he's gonna go pick it up and bring it home. He gets the wood for free, so it's a win for him, and she gets rid of it. It's a win for her, and um, he's gonna use the tractor. Uh, to load it on load logs on the on the trailer so yeah um tuesday night we did not record the podcast we are several podcasts ahead uh in fact oh my goodness i've got to get on to the next podcast um i think i downloaded it already um i just had to edit it which there's not a lot of editing to do i think if i remember right the, the the next one to come out is uh is pretty tame uh, uh very informative but pretty tame um but i just wasn't i don't know hey jmb i wasn't in the mood as they say uh last night no- uh tuesday night to record the podcast um and and there's been a lot of that i just haven't been i don't know uh i haven't had much get up and go i never do have a lot of get up and go but it's just i don't know i'm i'm fighting it and trying to get through it um it's just a bleh feeling. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm remembering back when I was in the, in the army, uh, back in, the well, 88, 89 and 90, uh, 91 and, uh, well, it was 88, December of 88 through 92, I think it was. Um, and, uh, Then when I got out of the, I just had my, I I was never really self-motivated, but when there was something to do, I would jump in and do it. Um, yeah, I agree. Spring, bleh. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, there's stuff I could be doing. I could be picking up around, uh, the yard. The wind has been horrible here. Howable, howable, howable wind. Um, and, uh, I, uh, uh, that has kept me inside, but all of you that live in a house, much less a homestead, know there's always something to do inside. Um, uh, I, uh. I got a video for tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it out or not. Um, it's, uh, I don't know. It, it's, it's a package opening. <laughs> and, and I just don't know if I want to play around with, with, with that 
type of product. Um, but, but I was really happy to get the, um, the box in the mail and I, and I've got more, more stuff coming. Um, I got a bunch of tracks coming in my million dollar bill tracks. They, they got a million dollar bill on the front and the gospel on the back. And in case you're wondering, no, it's not um, counterfeiting because the United States does not nor has ever made a million dollar bill. Uh, but if you find a place that'll cash them in for for real money, let me know because I can look at that wad. Look at that wad. Woo. Um, then I got my scientific facts in the bio. This is for me. I am enthralled with how the Bible um, has scientific, it, may, it makes scientific declarations way before science knew what it was talking about. Like uh, back when um, the, the, uh, the scientists were saying there were thousands of stars in the sky, uh, the Bible said they were countless, and we still haven't counted them all. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's not the the box. No, it's it's uh, it's not six to eight inches. Uh, no. Um. What it is, is it's it's a tack pack. Um, you can go on tackpack.com and I said, I'm going to try them out. And uh, for $29 a month, um, they will send you a box. And I think for, for $29, I think it's $36 all total shipping and handling and everything um a month and i think i added it up to um 50 50 some dollars worth of stuff hey how's it going patrick welcome uh worth of stuff but um but it's weird because i know i i know the laws in New York, in my state, and um, I I don't want to break them, and and they won't break them, um, you know, like because they can't send me anything that that that's against the law. But I worry. Okay, what if I post this video, and down the road something that is legal today because it does have to do with pew pews and um uh and i put it on a video today and then they're like ah he has this later on and that's stephen russell how's it going have you ever considered putting the homestead on hold renting for the summer and being a camp counselor for the summer, a shake up like that. Uh, actually, I I have. I've done that. Uh, my uh, I had a cell church that uh, a, a home based church uh, that my father, my stepfather pastored, and my mother. Um, and then when my stepfather died uh, or had uh, had a stroke, I pastored it for a while. I wasn't meant to to lead adults. I'm just adults find me kiddish. Go figure. Um, but uh, but we did hold uh, summer camps and 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 stuff like that. And I have worked at um, Moose River, uh, what is it? Uh, Moose River Baptist Youth Camp. I think it is. Yeah, Moose River Baptist Youth Camp. Um, yes, you did, Stephen. Yes, you did. Um, and, um, it was really good. 
I, I, I have, I was a camp counselor, uh, at word of life. Um, when I attended college there, um, and then I had a youth group. I, I don't know if you guys know this about me. Um, my calling is towards the unchurched. Um, evening, John. I believe I believe in reaching out to those who uh, reaching out to people to kids, teens primarily, um, rather than having them come to you. And we had at the gym at the Port Lydon Elementary School, we would have 50 to 60 kids every Friday night. We would play games, uh, crank the Christian music, contemporary Christian music. Um, and uh, then while the younger kids were in getting their lesson, the older kids would be playing in the gym. And then we would all get together for a meal in the cafeteria um, because some of these kids didn't get hot meals regularly. And then, um, we would switch and the younger kids would go to the gym for their playtime and the older kids would get a, uh, Bible message. Um, yes, yes, they do. Um, we need to stand up and, and say being masculine is not toxic. Um, I, I have, in recent years, come to light that we're not teaching our kids properly. Uh, young girls have a hard time sitting for eight hours a day. Young boys, much more so. In fact, when young boys sit, their body produces chemicals that get them up and around. That is why you should try gardening and stuff. When you have your children at home, when the state doesn't have them in the winter, or in, in fall months. Um, Uh-oh, I need a change? A diaper? I worry about that sometimes. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, but our kids, uh, when, when you have them, teach them. My... I believe that young boys and young girls need to spend just as much time exploring the woods as they do books in the classroom. Um, not taking away, like I said, just as much. They need an equal amount of time outside, running, playing, exploring, learning on their own, working alongside mom and dad uh, in, the, in the things of a household. We need to teach our kids how money works. Oh, my word. If somebody would have taught me how money worked when I was 15, 16 years old. Oh, my goodness. They don't teach you that. My my mom's the one that taught me how to balance my checkbook. Oh. Uh-oh. Don't look at this sensitive information. But my God shall supply your need according to his riches. Um, Philippians 4.19. Um the uh, and and I've depended on that before. I've written checks that I didn't know where, where how I was going to get the money in there, but I did. So God is so good to me. But anyway, um, our kids need to learn. Um, and then uh, I would like to do it this summer. I don't know if we're going to be able to. Trevor and I, at the time. It was just Trevor and I as adults um, through the the youth group that we had at the school. In the summer, we would plan a week, a th two or three night trip, and we would backpack hike into the Adirondacks, usually around, um, uh, I'm going to say three to five miles uh, we would try to use the lean-tos. New York State has a wonderful camping system, uh, first-come, first-served bases with, with lean-tos that they have set up. Usually there's water around. And we would, we would take a bunch of boys, teenage boys. Be, the only reason we didn't take girls was we did not have a female leader 
And um, we just didn't feel it was appropriate to take young girls without a female leader. I've never been a teenage girl. They have problems, issues, and see the world totally different than I, than I do being a man. Um, so, so we would need that um, female presence. Now, we might be able to get, we might be able to con somebody into doing that this year with us uh, uh, and, and do the background camping. Uh, something to help you reset and get excited about the homestead lifestyle again. I'm hearing some passion in your voice. Yeah, I have always had a passion. I've been at odds recently. My church has a wonderful youth group and they're, they're growing and they have teenagers, um, that, um, are coming in from the streets. Uh, they're, you know, they're not, they, these aren't the kids that their family brings them to Sunday school. Uh, and, and those are the type of kids I, I work well with, but I'm not connecting with the kids the way I used to. I've been gray since, Hey, Peter, how's it going? I've been gray since I was like 28. I'm talking gray, gray, uh, somewhere in there. And, um, but I, there is now a generation gap instead of like, you know, my daughter is 39 years old. Okay. Um, now granted, okay. She's my stepdaughter and she was born when I was 13. She's my stepdaughter. <laughs> um, but, but still, um, it, it's, it's like, um, it's like relating to it, it, instead of a generation gap, there's like with me now a multiple, multiple, multi generational gap um, between me and the teens and, and, and stuff because it's so different. I am so different. Um, I, I was I was watching uh, there's a thing called vet TV. Okay. And I have been nostalgic recently for my days in the army. Okay. I, I spent uh, four years in the army, uh, Operation Desert Storm, got my combat infantryman's badge. Um, I, I was doing great. Uh, I was about to make E5. Well, I made E5. They took it away because it was in Desert Storm and it was a sham board. But, but, they they were about to send me to school to be be an e5 on the same day i found that out as as i walked out of the um the c the company command post where i was getting my early out um i got a i got like a six month drop three month drop something like that um because i wanted out i got got home on leave. I'd, I'd already been to war, found out what I wanted to find out about myself and, and, and got out, but I've been nostalgic for that. And, and I've been watching, uh, some vet TV, even that it's not like we, the way, if, if the mill, if the Marine, th this is the Marines, I was in the army, the, the show that I'm watching, if it is if the military is like they're representing, it's totally, totally different than what I experienced. Um, uh, but, but I've been, I've been going through that. I, um, you know, uh, shooting, getting into a little bit of uh, pew pew smithing, um, and and stuff like that. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm not quite set up. I, those, um, planners there are set up. I don't know what I want to plan in them yet. And then I've got my trays and everything over here and they're not set up yet. Um, because this year I'm waiting till it's got to be after April 20th when I plant inside every year. 
I, I started out March 1st, uh, several years ago, started out March 1st, planted inside everything, tomatoes. I had the stringiest, longest tomatoes, yada, yada, yada. Some of that was light, you know, some of that was not up popping them. They were all root bound. Um, so then I said, okay, the end of March, first of April, uh, I'll plant then. And, um, same thing. Uh, so I think I just heard my key cat go meow. Um, I think this year I'm going to, after the 20th of April is when I'm going to start my seeds in the house. Um, I'm not going to have a huge garden this year. I want to go to raised beds um, because it is, I didn't put down enough wood chips to create the amount of soil I need. I've, I've created over the past six years, five years of doing the back to Eden gardening method. I've created, um, about an inch or two inches of topsoil and then it's clay underneath that. So that's no good. Um, my plants grow, but they don't produce what they could. I would, I'm going to concentrate on smaller areas. I, I stink at weeding. I hate to weed. Um, and so this, this gives me a smaller, more defined area to weed. Then I can weed eat around them, put wood chips around them, all that good stuff. Uh, I, I've got the pigs going, um, I've got my 20 chicks that I am going, going to be introducing to the flock this summer. Uh, once they get feathers, uh, they will go out into the auxiliary pen that is now, right now, it's, oh, the door is open and my chickens go in and out of it. So they can get, they can get like out of the wind and, and they can get in the light. They can get out of the light. They have room. Hens can get away from roosters and um, mean hens, you know, timid hens can get away from mean hens and, and stuff like that. They have room to move if we do ever get more than the six or eight inches of snow that we have now. Um, but what I'll do is I'll close, I have a sliding gate between, um, between the two coops and I'll, I'll get them all out of there and then I'll close that sliding gate. And then once these, once these chicks get feathers, I'll move them in there so that the flocks are seeing each other, the new flock and the old flock. Now, I don't know. Everything in my body says, call the old her, the old flock. Um, that's not going to be easy for me. Number one, I don't have a whole lot of freezer space and these are old chickens. I mean, some of them are, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say they span in range between four and six years old. Okay. They, they've cut way back on laying. Um, and it's a lot of work for, not a lot of meat. Now I'm one person, one rotisserie chicken, you know, a decent sized rotisserie chicken would, would be great. I'll probably wait and just see how the economy's going. I don't buy, um, Hey Jane. Hey John and Jane's here. Um, and, um, so I don't know. Uh, I might see if somebody else wants to take them. They do make manure. Um, and uh, I am going to be getting meat rabbits a little later this spring. Uh, I'm hoping to. And that in itself will provide me with, well, it's not on demand, but you know, I, I was watching uh, videos today about rabbit math. Um, basically, that guy said, 
and and Mahi Lin and I I think Darren's had rabbits and a bunch of you guys in here have had rabbits before. Um, that you know he's he, this guy says hey you can you can fill your freezer with like 150 pounds of meat just from one doe in a buck, um, but if you get two does in a buck, then that you know exponential and stuff like that uh and instead of uh it, it's like with meat chickens you raise them for eight weeks and then you butcher them and that's all well and good but then you have to buy more so you're really not um as self-sufficient with the meat rabbits as you would be with uh, or with the with the meat chickens as you would be with meat rabbits because meat rabbits if you have a buck and a doe you can you can replenish you can uh, if you have a buck and two does uh, and and keep good track of the genealogies uh, you can you can replace them you know um, if you get two bucks and two does then you could you could say, okay, this doe can mate with this buck, but this buck is this doe's father. I can't mate them, yada, yada, yada. I don't know how many, Um, my phones are back there. Hey, Google, how many weeks until May 4th? Six weeks and two days. Six weeks and two days. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, that it that is just awesome. Um, and uh, Angie, well, I don't want to speak out of turn. Yeah, I, I won't go into that. She's okay and everything. It, it just, um, um, I do have a friend, um, her name is Jeannie and I've known her since I was about six or seven, maybe five or six or seven. Uh, well, it was after five, so six or seven years old and, um, she has cancer. I hate cancer. I hate cancer. I hate cancer. Um, and, uh, they said chemo now to, to redo chemo would just make her sicker. Um, and, and I don't know, it, it breaks my heart cause I've known her so long and, and, and she's such a wonderful person and stuff. It's hard. Um, yes, hit that like button. And the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm getting into all sorts of new stuff. Um, I I am going to be doing more shooting um, with my various pew pews. Um, but I don't have the money to be a, a, a uh, what they would call a a, a gun tuber. Um, I, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, she, she's, she's older. I think she's in her seventies, but, but man, it just hits hard. Um, but, uh, and, and, and more homesteading content as well. Um, my gardening, you know, I started this channel uh, when I did, I started this channel back in the 20 teens and just to store videos um, for my grandkids so that they could learn some of the lost ways. Um, if you go way back, I think my first video was actually a snow camp, a Word of Life snow camp. Um, that I posted, but just because I needed a way for the kids to be able to get to my recordings, the kids and youth group, um, to the videos that I made. 
um, for, for that. And I only did like one or two of them, but, um, but then there's like a butchering, how to butcher a deer, a three part series, how to butcher a deer. That's, uh, still on YouTube, but it's also on the no borders homesteaders, uh, Patreon page too. Uh, hey, Dave. Um, because they allow stuff like that. And then Remy's got a chicken butchering video on there. Um, hey, Remy, how goes it? Um, on the No Borders Homesteaders Patreon page, and there's a No Borders Homestead YouTube page, but we're still restrained by YouTube guidelines um, on the type of content uh, that we can put out. Uh, but that's why I started this YouTube channel was I wanted to share who I was, who Wendy and I were, our lifestyle to our grandkids, because I wasn't sure, um, that they would get exposure to that. Cause at the time, well, at the time, I only had um, one, let's see, my oldest granddaughter, well, I had my grand, my grandson um, was, let's see, he's like 20 now, Me, he might be 21, boy, grandpa of the year here, uh, but my granddaughter, which was um, my daughter's first child she gave birth to um uh she's 16 now um so so i only had like one or two grandkids at the time when i did the the butchering videos and the baking bread on a wood stove videos and, and stuff like that and i still do stuff like that um not very often because Cooking like that and baking like that involves dishes. And I dislike dishes immensely. Um, I'll have to do a cow butchering one. Just need someone to video. Yeah, um, that would be great. That would be awesome because um, because we're trying to build up the No Borders Homesteaders also. Um, I know quite a few channels that started as a way to talk and teach their grandkids. I wish my grands would have the ability to do. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. Um, um, it, it's a great way. If they, if they could sit through it, um, I mean, I get, uh, I get, um, thank you. <laughs> um, I get, but, but then when I started up the, the, actual channel and i said okay i'm gonna work to get monetized and i'm gonna work for my next goal and i've gotten monetized i'm almost to 1500 subscribers and it's all been a um it's all been organic growth i ha i haven't bought any i haven't done anything where uh people get on that don't watch, you know, it's, it's all organic growth. My thing is homesteading encompasses so much. You get the guard, the people who are interested in the gardening, the people who are interested in the chickens, people who are interested in the pigs, people who are interested in the pew pews, um, uh, people that are interested in the cooking and all. Um, but when I started, I said, listen, I don't have any one special skill that I can offer. So what I'll do is I am just going to offer, this is my life. This is what's going on on the homestead 
this week that I can share with you. Um, and now I can't, I don't share everything. Um, I haven't videoed in my pantry in a long time. Um, because the way things are going, I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, we're pretty much in the times I started prepping for. Because I started off kind of as a prepper, I guess. Um, the Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers and 10-gallon uh, or 5-gallon buckets. Um, well, yeah, I have, yes, I, I have plenty of skills, but I don't have any one thing that I am good enough at um, that, that, that I would have enough material, you know, it, even, even with the pew pews, I don't, I don't, sh I don't shoot enough to make a video every week of it. I can't afford that. Now, maybe I would be able to afford that. Um, and, 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 um, I'm not, I have my chickens and I share some about them, but I'm not, I'm not passionate about chickens. I love chickens. I'll probably, I hope I have chickens to the day I die. Um, which I don't know if I'm hoping it to be a long time away or anyway. Um, but the chickens, uh, I'm, I'm just not passionate about them as as I used to be, I have chickens for eggs. They, they are food for me. Um, the, the eggs that they, they are a means to get protein in my diet. Um, no matter what I do when they get old, uh, whether I do give the older ones away or, uh, butcher them and put them in the freezer. I don't have a lot of room. Um, I got to tell you guys, depending on how much bacon I have left in the freezer, when it comes time to take my pigs to butcher, that is going to decide whether I sell both my pigs or keep half of one this year. Um, my freezer is full. Praise God, I can eat. A, I could probably last a year off what I have. Or more. Um, uh, the thing is, too many kiddo, kiddos grew up in an apartment complex and never saw someone turn the earth. And all the starting knowledge skill is much needed. Yes, it is. And it's being very, very frowned upon. I don't know how they're doing it. They're making homesteaders gardeners and farmers the enemy um now i don't know how they're doing it i'm passionate uh, yeah this is this is pg um but yes yes um youtube acceptable passions let's let's because for darren for darren i will say there's not that much that i have a, that i'm passionate about that's suitable for youtube um, I am not perfect. Uh, just, just for the, because I know a lot of you guys in here are Christians and you're like, oh, Tracy, you know, every, every once in a while he makes an off color joke and, and stuff like that. Um, that's because I try to be real. And the little guy on my shoulder that says, that's supposed to tell me, don't say that out loud. Keep that thought inside quit years ago um <laughs> keep bridging on it <laughs> oh but but yeah and, and you know i might um you know that i i got the tractor well trevor's got it right now it's funny i didn't have any well i i had like an inch of crusty snow when we took it down, but he, he's going to need it for some stuff. Um, I think I explained about that earlier. Um, bum, 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 bum. Some other man may deny. Anyway, um, 
but yeah, uh, it, it's it's one of those things where I just want to continue putting out my life, um, what I'm doing, what I'm interested in. Now, because of the changing laws in some areas of my life, uh, that puts a restriction on me what I what I will and won't share. Um, with the attack on homesteading, farming, gardening, and stuff like that, I'm not going to want to share quite, you know, oh, you know, one day it's illegal to have more than a week's worth of food at your house. Guys, you don't think, yeah, don't even think they ain't thinking it. Um, they're, they're not even pretending to, uh, they're not even pretending to hide it anymore. They are them. They have the full weight and force of government behind them and they will do what they want to do to whom they want to do it. Um, Uh, just the other day, I don't know what he did. I don't know any of the details, but there was a no knock raid at five or six o'clock in the morning, uh, of a gentleman's home. He was a executive at an airport. I don't know who, who this guy was or anything about him. Um, but they served a no knock warrant. Somebody was busting into his house. He woke up, fired a, a few rounds. I do not suggest firing at law enforcement, but for all he knew, possibly, I don't know how it transpired. Um, I wasn't there, but if somebody busts in your house at five or six o'clock in the morning and you're just waking up, all you... The very first thing you hear is bam, and then a bunch of screaming and stuff. Somebody's breaking into your house. You're going to respond to that. Well, gee, he didn't have to pick up the gun. He thought somebody was breaking in to kill him and rape his wife. You know, I don't know the details in that case, but these no-knock warrants, man, and, and stuff, they're bad juju. Tracy, I know you sense. Oh, yeah. You being real is what made you good with the youth group. We could relate better with you the most. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Jake. Um, yeah, that that's the thing is, is uh, kids in particular can smell a lie like a fart in a car. If I tried to fit in, with the kids of today, it, it would be very, very hard. It was getting hard towards the end of the youth group before the pandemic, um, which is what ended up uh, stopping the youth group at, at in Port Leiden. I was beginning to lose my connection with the kids. And, and, and that's a cool thing is, is when you can when you can share your life and, a lot, and other people feel comfortable sharing their life with you um, and, and they see that this this isn't this isn't just something that I do on Sundays this this biblical Christianity goes through me 24/7 whether I'm um, telling a, a off color joke or or what you know i'm not i'm not perfect i mean i never told an off color joke to a teen um but you got to be real with people it was for so long uh christians put on airs uh and they 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 you know oh you know, oh, you, you mentioned you mentioned the strip club down the street. Oh, I could never, I could never go in the strip club. Well, guess what? 
I just read an article about uh, a bunch of pastors' wives uh, that started going to the strip club and taking gift baskets to the strippers. And um, that led to them forming some personal relationships with these women um, and finding out, hey, these women aren't just evil trying to give their body. They don't like doing that stuff, but they it's it's the only way that they see for themselves to get ahead. Eventually, that caused a um, the, the, the girl said, listen, we'd, we'd like to have a Bible study. Can you guys run a Bible study? And they said, hey, listen, our husbands are pastors. One of them is interested in leading the Bible study. The husband in the back room of the strip club before it opened, they were having a Bible study like once or twice a week. Um, and, and, and these women saw the love of Christ instead of the, Oh, I could never go in there. No, oh, man. Jesus hung out with tax collectors and sinners. Now he did not condone the sin. He didn't say, Oh, well, that's just the way you are. He said, no, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, you know? Um, and, 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 you know, I don't, I don't want to start preaching. This is not a religious um, channel so much, but I hope that that Jesus shines through me to to whoever watches this stuff. Um, I had a post, I post, and it was talking about um, my sheep hear me and they know my voice. I'd lay down my life for the sheep. Yada yada yada. It, it, it's uh, it was that verse. And Facebook put a, a screen over it that it could be offensive content. <laughs> no, not tonight. Not tonight. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm just bleh today. Have you ever been just bleh? Um, I am, I've been playing with the chicks. I gave them new bedding uh today and um and then i've been i've been watching tv um uh alex brought his new tractor by yeah alex brought his new tractor by and in the bucket he had this nice it's a piece of i-beam metal i steel i-beam uh that was a support beam uh, that, that he was able to get, um, from, uh, it, it was like stuff they were getting rid of from a construction site. It was, it was just like a four. Well, actually, I think this is more like a six foot piece, but, um, and he brought it over for a backstop for the shooting range. <laughs> I like big roosters and I cannot lie. Some other brothers can deny. Yeah, where did they get that extra? That I've never heard. I I think I might have heard a rooster do it once. Most of the time, roosters don't go. They just go. You know. Anyway, uh, when we went from 10 degrees over freezing to 10 below, 10 degrees below freezing and two and a half foot of snow, the blahs were out. Yeah. Yeah, I got to tell you, it took the wind out of my sails. It really did. Um, looking out here now, you know, going out in the morning, I wake up in the morning and I raise my weary head. I got an old coat for a pillow and the earth was last night's bed. Don't know where I'm going. Only God knows where I've been. I'm the devil on the run. Six gun lover. A candle in the wind. How did I get on to Bon Jovi? No, I wake up. Sorry, guys. I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is check the fire. Um, and I, I open, I get all the coals together in a heap, open the door a little bit so that it 
it gets the coals reheated. Go outside. When there's snow on the solar panels, I clean off the solar panels, grab an armful of wood, split some kindling if I think I need it for the fire, uh, and bring that in. And then I plunk down in front of the pewter. Um, and uh, I, I check different things on the computer. Uh, I might, I might film a video, uh, lately I haven't been filming a whole lot of videos, uh, but it, it's because I've been inside when the wind, when that, when it's cold out and the wind is whipping the way it has been, or it's raining, even when it's raining and the wind is whipping, I just don't want to go outside, um, much less do anything else. Uh, but I need to, I, I need to get my oomph back. I need to, uh, there's no use in training to kick in doors if you can't fit through the door. Um, I am the heaviest I have ever been. I am 237 pounds the last time I weighed myself. To think I was down to 210 at one point here just about a year and a half ago. Year, year and a half ago. No, I did not. Um, I have, I still have like two gallons of syrup from the year before last. So I did not tap any trees this year. I should have, uh, cause I could have sold it. Um, got some income. Um, yeah, I lost my mojo. I was like, um, if I ever had mojo, I don't know. I might have had some mojo at one time, but then we had tea and it was just me and, and you know, my mojo went bye-bye. Don't know what accent that was. <laughs> but yeah, um, I got the water set up. Uh, it's covered with snow. The, 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 from the house i never took my gutters down last year could be a could have been a mistake i don't know but i got my big tote one tote under it because i've got to fill a tote with water for the pigs so that their automatic water will work it's not going to work in the in in this temperatures like this i mean when it was uh you know i i filled it with slightly warmer water um, cause I'm carrying right now, I'm carrying five gallon buckets out there, um, to give them water. Um, but you know, it, it'll just freeze. So I, I filled it full of slightly warmer water so that hopefully that'll melt some of the ice and, um, but yeah, the poor pigs, they, they were raised in a barn. They never saw snow before. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I enjoy a lot of the stuff. Uh, I, I enjoy the homesteading stuff. I, I enjoy filming my life. What I don't, the, the, the problem is, is that I got, I got the winter funk. I got the, I, like he said, I lost my mojo. Um, I just, the stuff, there's stuff I want to do that I can't do financial constraints, uh, are holding me back from that. There's stuff I should do that I, I'm not doing that would eventually, uh, relieve those financial restraints. Um, but yeah, I'm just going through living life one day at a time and trying to share that journey and be as real as I can. Um, and, and, and it's at the same time, it's an election year and I'm trying to stay out of the politics. Oh my gosh. I very much dislike politics, but guys, when you go to vote, just remember no matter who you vote for, you're not marrying the guy. You're not 
sign up to be his best friend. Okay. Uh, we, we got one guy who's been indicted a bunch of times on one side and we got another guy that's under investigation for influence peddling and, 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 and making millions of dollars from influence peddling, uh, basically running a crime syndicate. So they both suck. Um, and I, I'm very conservative. I cannot vote for people. Um, there, I, I, I cannot vote my personal view. If you, if you feel different, then, then that's, that's fine. You're, you're entitled to your opinion. Um, but I cannot vote for anyone that's pro-abortion. I cannot and will not vote for anybody that, uh, is anti second amendment that is, or for big government. Um, I believe the government should be, um, Government should should not cross your mind every day. Uh, I think one of the best ways to appreciate what we have is to get away when you return your vi- yeah and and I will be I'm going to the uh, Eastern Ontario Homesteading Conference May the fourth then in. Sometime in June, I am going to West Virginia again, riding the side-by-sides. You should do a video almost going back in time and show where it all started from the beginning. Wow, that's a good idea. I should. I should start working on that. Hey, Tracy, I hear you on the motivation. Today, I grabbed my dried cayenne and apple peels and put them in mason jars. It was something. Just do a little bit and keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Tammy, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Um. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's it's kind of depressing because if if the guy that does not represent my values wins the presidency. I believe our country will lose and it, it it will it might not recover. If the guy who does share my values on the issues and stuff like that wins I it's going to be very divisive for our country. Um and it, it could hurt our country in ways that that you know um that we don't want <laughs> what's up bushcraft family how's it going how's it going welcome welcome um so so that i got to tell you i'm i'm trying to stay away from the 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 politics it's it's uh basically i want to be that guy that goes in uh, on voting day, cast my vote, maybe watch his TV to find out who won, and then goes about my own way, you know. Um, and and I want to be that gray man. Uh, I know, I think I talked with... Uh, oh... G, is his name Gene? Is it Gene? Um, anyway, I, 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 I've talked before about being that gray man, being that man that um, when I go out in public, I'm not catching anybody's eye for the better or the worse, which would really hurt if I decided to start dating, which, to be honest... To be honest, I, I I I might I might like to 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 do a little of the dating thing. Um, 
and to, to have a woman around would be awesome. But, uh, but I'm content. Um, I have everything I need, not everything I want, but I very much doubt I'm that the government's ever going to give me everything I want. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm content. I'm just, all right, Stephen. I will. I will say hi to them. Uh, Austin, Texas. Have a good night. Austin, Texas, where you're still fairly free. <laughs> um, but I just want to live my life and 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 according to my uh pursuit of happiness um and it was funny i was talking to somebody or i was watching a video on youtube the other day and they were talking about people say i was born a century too late i should have been born in the 1800s Let's examine that statement. 1800s. Or, well, let's go 17, 18, 17 and 1800s. Um, the Revolutionary War. No. Most people, okay, number one, toilet paper wasn't invented yet. Flushing toilets and indoor plumbing had, had not been invented until I, I forget what it was. Queen Elizabeth back in the 1500s had a flush toilet. Uh, Queen Elizabeth the first, I believe it was. She had a flush toilet, but she, her nephew invented it. And he, then he said some nasty things about her. So she had him imprisoned or executed or something, took the blueprints, had it built, then destroyed the blueprints. So, no, he, he could never benefit. And uh, so she had a flush toilet back in the 1500s. But um, yeah. Um, do you know what they used in the uh, homesteading times, in the, in the, uh, the uh, gold rush times, in the times when they were going to the, uh, when they were making the push out west? Everybody had their cloth. I don't know. Hold on. Let's ask Mr. Google Pants. Hey, Google, when was the flush toilet invented? Or when did the flush toilet become commonplace? Huh. Okay, 1775 was when the when the uh, first patent was filed. So you're probably looking at the 18 the middle 1800s before uh, flush toilets were popularized uh, in indoor plumbing. I I know. Um, well, the Romans, they had public toilets um, where they had water running through and you would sit over the running water the, the, on the bench, do your business. And then there was a sponge and vinegar on a stick and that's how you would clean yourself. And then you'd put it back in the vinegar so the next guy could use it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, but I'm saying in, in wide common use, okay, where, okay, let's face it, if this were the Middle Ages, I would be a peasant, I would not be nobility, I would be a peasant, um, 
need more wine. Uh, yeah, this is a discussion, all right. Um, so the chances of me having a flush toilet back then, iffy. Um, out on the, um, well, still to this, I mean, the streets of the cities in England, they would build, you, you walk and you see these beautiful chateau houses lined up and they all, the upstairs goes about two or three feet past the, the street side of the first floor. Well, that's because that's where the bathroom was. You would poop or whatever, and it would go down on the street. They would, in London, they would, your, um, what is it? Your uh, night chamber pot, they called them. Um, you would empty, you were in a city. You would empty them into the sewer, which was above ground. Uh, and it would run Oh, it's not about the discussion. His glass of wine is empty. Okay. Um, uh, there, there, there is a reason in the, uh, um, oh, what was that? Uh, back in the middle ages before toilets were commonplace. Yeah. Um, that, not having a pot to piss in, um, that uh, or calling someone a piss pot, um, that was a chamber pot. In the middle of the night, you didn't get up and go out to the outhouse. You went, did what you had to do in your chamber pot. You peed or pooped or whatever, and then in the morning, you would take it out to the outhouse and dump it down the hole if you lived in a rural area. Nope, the lowest floor was smaller because they were taxed on how big the first floor was. That's why houses got bigger as they went up. Oh, that might be an added reason. Um, but I have heard that talked about where it was an exit for the uh, humanure. Um there's a two-story house here, outhouse, a two-story outhouse here in Michigan still standing. Um, in castles and all, uh, a lot of people don't know this. That is, uh, I mean, yes, the moat was for defense, but that's what the moat was for. You dump, when you dumped your stuff outside, it went out into the moat. Um uh, yeah, that's something I never got used to in the army. In Fort Benning, they would have uh, six or eight seat outhouses uh, in in uh, the King Khalid military community. Well, well, in Saudi Arabia, once we got went out into the desert uh, for Desert Storm, um, I was on the detail several times because I upset certain higher ranking officials in the platoon. And, uh, yeah, all, all, all of the, uh, once they did come out with sewer systems and indoor plumbing and stuff, it all went down into the rivers and the creeks. Um, but, uh, but we were, we would be out, I would, we would be out in the desert and you would take these, uh, two inch PVC pipes and push them down into the sand at an angle. And you would, that's how the guys peed. You peed down into those pipes and it was so dry, it would absorb it up, you know. And then when you moved, you just pulled the, the PVC pipes. Um, and uh, then the, um, oh, then we would just dig a trench uh and and in the ground that was about that wide and you would straddle that for for poo um when we were going to be in one place for a while you could always tell 
the Navy from the Army, open showers versus close. We didn't have, um, when I was in basic training and advanced individual training, I was the last to go through Fort Benning's Harmony Church, the World War II barracks. Then they started Sand Hill, which was, we call them starships. They were, they were these big, massive buildings. But, um, but we had open showers. Um, on Fort Drum in the National Guard, when we would go for our two-week annual training, they had open base showers. Um, in active duty, uh, in Garlstadt, North Germany, every room had its own shower and toilet and sink, uh, and it was a closed bathroom. Um, but yeah, uh, it is... Uh, it's 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 some craziness to look into some of this stuff. Um, I I wouldn't want. I'm off grid. I'm one hundred percent off grid, off the electrical grid, and off the water grid. I have my own solar panel and generator that makes my electricity. Now, yes, 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 I use gas in the generator. Um. I have a water well that provides water to the house, drinking, flushing, showering, all that stuff. Um, even being off the electrical grid, there are certain comforts I don't want to give up. Um, uh, coffee, hot showers. Um, hot water and stuff. If I decide to do the dishes, refrigeration is very important. Um, I do have a stand up freezer. Now, take that all away, and I could make do, I could live, I wouldn't be comfortable as I am now, but I could live. I could live in a bushcraft setting with a with a small cabin and um, uh, making my lantern or my lamp oil out of fish guts and and all that stuff. I could do that. I don't want to. That was one of the things that attracted Wendy and I to off grid living. Was uh, what do you do for fun? You go camping. Why not camp all the all the time? But then we just kept getting more and more um, uh, what do you call them? more and more luxuries. Indoor refrigeration, indoor plumbing, uh, propane cook stove, propane fridge, and then the freezer, and all that stuff. And, and, and that's the way it goes. That's the way it happens sometimes. Um, uh, but you need to know how to live without it um, and be able to live without it. Off-grid is off the government-supplied grid. There are those who imply off-grid is suffering with nothing. Nope, off-grid is simply being disconnected from... But yeah, that, I agree with that. Um, you don't have to go back to bushcraft in order to be off grid. However, having bushcraft skills is something no one can take away from you. Knowledge of how to start a fire, knowledge of how to stay warm, build shelter. Um, I, I want to say weapons, but I'm just going to say tools for hunting fishing, how to get food, how to grow food, how to harvest food, bushcraft type, excuse me, bushcraft type survival is very important to, to, to learn, in my opinion. Um, I have oil lamps and kerosene lamps. Um, you say, well, you got to buy the kerosene or the oil. No, you don't. I do. Um, 
but you don't. You can take fish guts, put them in a pan, and boil them. The fat in that will render. Then you strain out the solids, boil it again, strain out the impurities through a cloth, do it again and again, and you will come up with a flammable liquid that will work in an oil lamp. Um, yeah, uh, candle making, uh, soap making, um, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, definite skills that you should have. Um, I was watching um, an American homestead, Zach, uh, and he was talking. He got hold of an electrical uh, electrician friend of his, and he asked him a question, he, and he told the guy, he says, hey, listen, if this is a stupid question, just say, hey, you're, you're an idiot, and I can take a hint. Uh, he's, he, he says, what are the problems with an EMP? What would happen if an EMP hit? Cause everybody, it's all the rage. Oh, they're going to hit us with an e electromagnetic pulse and it's going to shut down the grid. Personally, I've got a lot of family and friends that are on the grid and I pray it never happens because they're going to be sucking. Uh, it's going to make life very hard for them for an extended period of time. But he said, because the chips that are in the vehicles now, um, if your vehicle is not running when the EMP hits um, and it, it it might survive. My solar system is grounded. Um, and there, there are things you can buy for them that, um, uh, for your house that will absorb a lightning strike. It'll, it'll bleed off all that energy so it doesn't fry your system, but your solar system is grounded and, um, yeah, uh, our estimates are that I have heard are there are, <laughs> there are several spots in the Midwest where the United States infrastructure, electrical infrastructure, power infrastructure is narrowed down to like four spots in the United States. And if every one of those were, were, would be hit with an EMP is the last estimate I heard, it would take about 18 months. Now that is because there is so much wire to absorb that electromagnetic pulse and transport it through all these transformers and, and relay stations and uh, yada, yada, yada. Whereas, um, if you're not hooked to the electrical grid, um, you don't have that much wire. If you have a metal roof, now I, I'm going to look into this more because again, this is from an American homestead. He's a YouTuber. He's smart, knows what he's talking about, but he, he talks about if you have a metal roof, ground it ground your metal roof and i have no problem grounding my metal roof as long as it's not going to attract every bolt of lightning around um um but uh and 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 because a metal a steel roof yeah you're like a faraday cage not quite but Kind of. A Faraday cage is a metal cage that goes around that absorbs that energy and redirects the energy from the EMP um, around. My understanding is the EMP is basically, it's an electromagnetic pulse. It's basically a, a bolt of lightning that overpowers and overwhelms the circuits in electrical systems 
Uh, yeah, that, that should prevent your vehicle from being fried. Yep. Uh, and, and now the circuits and stuff within the vehicles are so small that they, they, they might not be affected as long as they're not in directly under the blast or whatever. Yeah, EMPs are extremely unlikely unless um unless that would that would be an attack um or a solar flare. There there are two ways we can get hit by an EMP. Enemy attack, solar flare. Um Yeah, solar a solar flare could happen. There is some stuff about this coming um, eclipse uh, in April uh, that I found interesting. I'm not going to spread it because uh, I don't know, but this, um, but it, it's just pretty cool. The quince, the dating and how it coincides. It's just interesting to me. I should put points back in my El Camino. Yeah. It needs to be sealed. Um, it it, uh, but if I'm far enough away, is what they're saying is is that uh, sheet metal roof, if it is properly grounded, would absorb the bulk of the solar the, the electromagnetic energy from the solar flare or from the uh emp because chances are they're not going to hit they're going to hit very big populated areas which means that um for the most part unless you live near a big city um you're not going to be affected if they're if they were smart at all they would hit those places i i don't know where the places are so don't try to torture it out of me. But um, the places where our electricity is is narrowed down, uh, the the key points. Um, yeah, solar flares aren't picky. They'll hit anywhere. It it just depends on on the rotation and tilt of the Earth when a solar flare happens whether or not that is going to be an issue for what country uh, unless it lasts more than a day and i don't know how long they last or anything like that but the the thing is is be be prepared have some knowledge if if it goes away you're not going to have all the stuff that you've been storing in the cloud that survival book that you have stored in the cloud or uh you're not gonna have that uh you you don't know the the that cell phone that you have um your uh plant identification app on you don't know if that's gonna survive um you need to learn this stuff rem's family farm's got some awesome plant identification stuff coming up and out already uh, foraging and, and, and stuff like that. Um, the, the thing is, is, you know, you watch that, um, doomsday preppers show or used to watch that doomsday prepper show and I'm economic collapse. Very possible because the idiots in charge are idiots. What does that make the people that put them in charge? Anyway, um, <laughs> there are, I did not say there were not upsides. Um, but, um, but we should be prepared, just be prepared. For, like I said, the time that I started preparing for is here three and four dollar gasoline um food inflation 
uh, food is so expensive that that you can't afford to eat like you used to. Um, yes, I, I believe so too. Um, uh, everything is more expensive. Your money is not worth half as much. I don't care what country you're in. You're feeling the effects. Um, they are literally trying to replace meats by using bugs as fillers. I heard that Aldi's, which Aldi's and Trader Joe's are the same. This is a Facebook meme, okay? That Aldi's uh, is using manufactured meat, lab made bacon. Lab made bacon. That's sacrilegious right there, man. Man, don't mess with the bacon. Um, I know exactly where my bacon comes from. Praise God, I can do it. Find somebody that has the land where you can raise pigs or beef or chickens or whatever because they're they can do stuff to our meat now. These are the times we've been preparing for. I, I pray to God it never comes to any type of violence. But be ready in case it does. Maybe. Just a, a question there. Hollywood and media makes everything look bad to sell advertising. Yeah. Yeah. My my bacon and ham comes from a hundred foot away. Me too, brother. Me too. <laughs> and my beef, I think, as the crow flies, I think. Uh, hey Google, how far away is Holland Patent from here? All right. But first, you have to unlock your device. Oh, I don't want it uh, anyway. I bet you it's no more than 10 miles where my daughter, uh, they, they raise beef. April 1st in Canada, we get 23% carbon tax increase. Stock up on fuel. Be careful. Yes, stock up on fuel. But gas, you should not count on last on gas lasting more than like a year or so. Buy some of the stay bill stuff. It doesn't take a lot to treat. Um, you know, it do, it doesn't take a lot to treat uh, a five gallon gas can or whatever, but it will make it last longer. Propane does not go bad. Um, have a conversion kit might be in order in case. We can't get gasoline or gasoline gets expensive. I think I paid. Hold on. I can, I can tell you what I paid. I think I can tell you what I paid. I think I, no, it doesn't tell. It tells I got 161 gallons of propane. Um, but uh, I think I paid $2 and it, it was a really good price for propane. Um, yeah, methane goes really bad, but anything that will run off natural gas or propane now I'm not sure which, because like when I when you buy a, a propane stove, cook stove, sometimes you got to change those things out for natural gas or different uh, nozzles for natural gas and propane. But methane will work in those; it burns. Um, but it's all about guys. Be be ready. These are the days we have we have um 
been trying to prepare for when, when we said, hey, times might get bad, I'm going to prepare. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you're preparing for a solar flare, you're preparing for economical collapse, um, the, the fall of society, um, uh, riots without rule of law, uh, all those other things. Doesn't matter what you're preparing for. Prepare for it all. Have some food put away. Everything you use, especially things you use every day, toilet paper. Um, ha have some stacked up. You don't have to have, you know, a whole building of it. Um, 55 gallon drum of diesel in the shed for the tractor. Yeah, I want to get that. Um, it's, it's a lot cheaper to in, in the States here, at least it's a lot cheaper for agricultural diesel. Um, but you can't get caught using it in a regular vehicle. Just, you know, it's for off-road use only because otherwise it's tax evasion. Yeah, if you're like me, just be ready in case the cut. Yeah, yeah, man. The cost of food is going and the, the cost is going up and the quality is going down. Uh, somebody was saying uh, today that um, they did a study and the the nutritional values of vegetables in the store have dropped tremendously from what they were 20 years ago. Yeah, it is. It is fun. I, I, I know that I can fall back on... Um, <laughs> I did you one better. Um, shortly after things let up with the pandemic, um, I bought a bidet attachment and everything I need to hook it up for my toilet. I have not hooked it up or used it yet. I just can't get my mind around that. But, you know, that that's... If I have electric to power my well, my, you know, then I have plenty of... Uh, uh, a water to use. Um, cause yeah, uh, sponges and vinegar do not sound appealing to me, especially communal sponges and vinegar. Um, the, uh, Muslims in Iraq. They you they they uh, well I say Muslims the Arabs Muslim is a religion Arabs is is the culture the Iraqis when we caught them uh, we we set up a we helped set up a POW camp they actually the tankers went through and cleared an area cleared but they didn't get off their tanks. So we set up a 360 degree area in a secure area that had been cleared. Um, but they never got off their tanks. So we had people surrendering from inside, from bunkers inside our perimeter. Uh, and they had a designated spot where they would take care of any chunks with their left hand and then they would pull their shirt up and pour a bottle of water down their back. That was how <laughs> they cleaned themselves. I could not do that. Nope. I just kept eating the peanut butter from the MRE MREs that they gave us. Until I had a, because you get a little tiny packet of toilet paper, 
with every MRE. Well, sometimes you got one MRE a day. Sometimes you got two. It Sometimes it takes me some toilet paper, too much information. But I would save up till I had enough toilet paper. Then I would drink the cocoa, the, the chocolate drink powder, which would do the opposite of the, the peanut butter would bind you. And the cocoa beverage powder would open the floodgates. <laughs> um, yeah, whoever created MREs, man, they were they 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 knew what they were doing. Um, oh my goodness. Uh but uh, but yeah, guys, uh, be prepared. We don't know what's going to happen. The Bible says, boast not thyself for tomorrow, for thou knowest not what the day may bring. In other words, don't brag about what you're going to do tomorrow because you don't know what's going to happen tonight. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with preparing. Um, and, and, and being ready and, and living in a homestead, a, a homestead style life, you're, rotating your preps you're using them you're you're uh and as you use them at the next opportunity you replenish them uh my k cups for my coffee i have i have some big containers of regular coffee for uh and i have uh instant uh, several containers of instant coffee that will last me one of them will last me like a month or two. Um, but I buy my K cups for my coffee in bulk, 96 K cups in a, in a thing. Uh, because in the winter I drink instant coffee, but now the days are long enough where, uh, for the most part, I doesn't bother me a bit to run the coffee maker. Um, but I, used one i walked in the back room i used up the last one from a box of 96 walked into the pantry there were none left i'm like oh my gosh how did i let that happen so i bought two more boxes two is one one is none bought two more boxes one is in storage and one is here now when i run out of this one i'll buy me another one and um to replace it so i always have two on hand yeah dead soil does not produce nutrient uh nutrient rich food uh there was a test done uh with tomatoes some were rose inside a greenhouse some were rose raised out grown outside the greenhouse like 10 feet away from each other, same soil and everything. And the ones inside the greenhouse had a significantly less um, vitamin, I want to say B, in the skin, B17 or something. Um Oh, you're not doing a live tonight? No live for, for Darren tonight. Um, all right, we'll see you later, Darren. Thanks for stopping by. Um, but uh yeah, the something about the glass of the um of the greenhouse fil was filtering out. Uh I don't know. I don't know if I got any much left to <laughs> much left to chat about um but yeah um so so you know different thing and a lot of our vegetables fruits and vegetables are grown in greenhouses a lot of our fruits and vegetables are hybridized to last longer coated in wax, sprayed with chemicals to keep them fresh longer. Um, 
it's amazing the stuff that they do. Uh, I mean, to think, okay, I ordered a site for my new rifle and it's a trigic. It said it's a trigicon made in the USA on the picture. It says made in the USA stamped right on it. And, um, it was a Trigicon ACOG for $189. I'm like, dude, that's a deal. Even if it's, you know, a knockoff, if it's a decent optic, it's a decent optic. And, uh, it's coming from China. I, that was March 11th when I, the, the last I heard it was leaving a customs or something on March 11th. And I think they're shipping it. It says it was sent by plane, but I think they're shipping it. But yet we have apples, oranges, bananas and stuff growing in South America and overseas being shipped here. How long does that take? If it takes 8 to 15 days to get a, a rifle scope from China here, then how long does it take to get apples, oranges, and stuff that we can't grow here? Um, do you know how to forage? I can forage for a lot of stuff. Um, I could, I can, I, I can identify enough stuff positively that I could make a, um, a salad, um, you know, a good handful size salad, uh, just from, let's see, you've got your, um, dandelion greens your whole dandelion plant if you want um your the flowers and stuff add some nice color uh, heal all i have heal all here plantain um strawberry leaves um i don't know if you want too many strawberry leaves uh Blackberry leaves are very medicinal. I don't think I would do them. They don't, I don't think they taste very good, but yeah, plantain is awesome. Awesome. There was a guy that cut himself with a, um, this is anecdotal. Uh, he cut himself with a chainsaw, stuffed the cut in his leg with plantain to stop the bleeding and, and, you know, clean it out because there's, wood chips and all sorts of stuff in um on on your chain of your chainsaw went to the doctor before he went into the emergency room he pulled the leaves out and stuffed a t-shirt over it the doctor came in and he said what nurse cleaned this out and he says, why is it bad? He says, no, this is the cleanest wound I've ever seen. Raz um Ra yes, raspberry leaves are good in tea. Strawberry is got medicinal use of strawberry leaves and stuff. Um, uh, I got chamomile, comfrey, um, um, catnip. Catnip uh, is a mild sedative. Okay, uh, like if it, it, it's mild enough that if you want your kids to go to sleep at eight o'clock, you can give them a glass of catnip tea and they will go to sleep shortly after drinking it. Um, I am not condoning drugging thy kids. It just wouldn't be right at all. Um, uh, oh. Uh-oh, a guy who is not allowed to run a business in New York. Oh, my goodness gracious. Mm. 
I, I jumped over because Patrick said something in, in the uh, a chat group I'm in. And, and uh, I just wanted to check out, make sure it wasn't nothing important. Like, Tracy, you're talking too much or something. Um, yes, mint tea is awesome and very, very good for you. Um, and first post popped up. Uh, a guy who is no longer allowed to do business in New York is asking you to hire him as president. He's talking about Donald Trump. And I'm going to tell you again, if I had a better option with the same issue, uh, that, that would stood the same on issues as I do. And I thought would carry out his promises on the issues. I would vote for them instead of the Donald. But the reason he can't do business in New York is because New York is corrupt as all get out. They are taking our freedom one by one, you idiot. You, you idiot. Go back to California. They'll welcome you with open arms. Oh, sorry about that, guys. It's a friend of mine that posted it, and he probably won't. Watch this. Donald Trump is no longer allowed to do business in New York City because, um, well, they're all Democrats and they hate him and they're trying to destroy him because they don't want him to be president again because they're afraid that he will stop all of their debauchery. Oh, that just makes me so mad. You can't do business in New York. That's because New York, oh my gosh. The reason he's having problems coming up with the money for the bond, which a bond on $450 million is probably going to be seven or $800 million, is because nobody wants to invest in properties in New York because they're roasting real estate tycoons in New York idiots I don't think so I, I I don't I don't think that would be bad for Canada uh Canada needs to get off their butts and get rid of the liberal leadership in their government um I, but just what he will do to lower inflation, just what Trump would do to lower inflation, fuel for opening up for drilling, and the Keystone Pipeline is going to lower prices of fuel, which will lower prices of everything across the board, not just for the United States, not just for Canada, but for the whole world. Um, well, It, it it's it's one of those things where I think uh cause cause you think about it, he yes, America first, but he doesn't mind. Remember, this guy was a businessman. He has made the, the, the reasons the banks said that um yeah, he wouldn't do it at a hundred percent, Remy. Um remember when they called the banks to testify about him uh, lying about how much his stuff was worth, number one, the banks do their own research, you know. So they're like, we have no problem with it. He paid it back. We made millions of dollars off Mr. Trump. It was a good business deal for us. And I think that, um, yes, he did. He did. Um, he added tariffs on on import. Um, yep, yeah. and um, so you had to pay more taxes to sell in the states. the The reason he did that was because um, you have a huge uh, globalist ideology that is snuck into our federal government, and they like uh, China. 
was charging 25% tariffs on stuff we shipped to them, but we weren't charging them anything on theirs. Um, there were a lot of deals that benefited the other countries greatly and did not benefit the United States at all, actually hurt the United States. And what he did was he equaled them out so that our companies could compete price-wise with the foreign comp companies. Um, I think you'll find that if, if the Canadian government is willing to work fair deals um, that, that would benefit both the United States and Canada, because uh, you guys are our closest neighbor. Uh, Mexico is is worlds away from us as far as uh, prosperity, ideology, all that good stuff. Um, but um, if I, I believe that if you guys, if if your government is willing to work with our government, um, mutual mutually beneficial deals could be worked out. Now, what I worry about is with your left-leaning government, um, Trudeau, um, and I, 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 I worry if they will get on board with the a more a more level playing field because for so long um for so long america has and i'm not saying all country i do not know how much other countries have have put in to like nato and stuff like that but america has has been the the bulk because we have it we 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 are one of the rich one of the richest nations on earth um and 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 militarily we are the largest uh considering a uh one aircraft carrier group would um um could wipe out a small country um but uh but we were trying to, it, it's like, I don't know where we, we, it used to be, if you win a war, you take over the country that you won. Now we win a war and we rebuild the country that we won, or just apparently leave them all sorts of high tech military grade weapons. Uh, New York city e isn't even, a nice place to be. No, it's not. Um, Governor Hochul, I do not like the woman. Um, Governor Hochul has had to put the National Guard, because the National Guard is under the governors, unless they're federally activated, which rarely happens, but it has. Um, but the governor has put the National Guard in the subways to help back up the police. However, they have no right to arrest, which means if they see a mugging, they can't stop it because that would be arrest. Um, they cannot have their scary long guns, um, which is probably a good thing because quite frankly, uh, you don't even want your, they don't even want their police to use their guns. Uh, basically all they can do is sit and watch the police officer go through random bag checks, which is against the fourth amendment, the right to privacy of my person. Um, and, and they, and they call the conservatives fascists. Um, but yeah, uh, you have, because of the southern states sharing the burden of illegal immigration, illegal aliens with New York, 
Um, they had the, in, the influx of illegal aliens and um, they can't handle the influx. Well, welcome to what Texas is going through and Arizona and New Mexico and California, but California likes it. Um, but they're what the southern governors did by shipping those people to these northern non-border states is open their eyes hey this is hurting our economy hey this is rising raising violent crime hey this is unmanageable <laughs> and uh you know that's that's something that they needed to wake up to um a nation without borders is not a nation um, but what it is, is the Democrats are letting them in and, and, and I, I don't care if you're a Democrat, you're welcome to your, your opinions, your views on all the issues who I am not someone to tell you, uh, what to believe on that stuff. Um, but they are looking forward and they're trying to pass laws. They've already passed a law that if if an an illegal alien, they call them uh, illegal migrants or newcomers now, they don't even like the illegal on there. But um, if they are waiting for their asylum court date, which can be years from now, they can purchase firearms federally, yeah. Yep. They can purchase, they can fly on a plane without an ID. Go figure. For free. The government will pay for it. Wouldn't that be nice? Government paid. You get me there. I can pay for what I need when I get there, but the cost of travel is, uh, I don't know, guys. I hope my Jesus comes back soon. And I hope we're all ready for him when he does. I hope I'm ready for him when he does. Biblically, it's all on him. Um, so I should be good. But I hope you guys are too. Um, because this world is, is it's not the same place that we grew up in, guys. We have been silent way too long. And I don't think we're ever going to get it back to the country that it was. Just, well, I, wow, 20 years ago is the 2000s. And I'm going to go back. I think the 80s. Maybe the 60s, 70s, and 80s were the peak time for the world where the world was the best. And even that one, you know, we had our downsides too, but I don't think we're even going to get anywhere close to back to the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, we've just fallen too far. But I live today for the promise of tomorrow. And it wasn't a man that promised me tomorrow. It was the Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And Um... You know I'm not a believer, but if he exists, I believe he will accept the good people, whether we believe or not. And he'll reject bad people that believe. Um, yes-ish. Let me read you something. This is the back of my million-dollar bill. The million-dollar question. Will you go to heaven when you die? Have you lied, stolen, 
used God's name in vain or lusted, which Jesus said was adultery in Matthew 5, 28. If so, God sees you as a liar, a thief, a blasphemer, and a, an, an adulterer at heart. If you die in your sins, you will end up in a terrible place called hell. But there's good news. Though we broke God's law, Jesus paid the fine by dying on the cross. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Then Jesus rose from the dead proving everything he said was true and was seen by hundreds of people. It's no fairy tale. He fulfilled all the prophecies of the promised Savior. Please today repent. That means turn away from your sins and to God and trust Jesus and God will forgive you and grant you the gift of eternal life. Then to show your gratitude, read the Bible daily and obey it. Join a Christian church and be baptized. Visit needgod.com, livingwaters.com. Um, what if you lie but don't know you're lying? I don't know. I will tell you this. I know that I've lied while knowing I've lied that I was lying enough times to count <laughs> um because how many times do you have to murder someone to be a murderer just one you murder one person you're a murderer you tell one lie knowingly or you tell one lie you're a liar you um you look at one man or woman with lust you're an adulterer at heart Um, and, and the, yeah, the thing is, is God's standard. We think that we're good people because we judge ourselves compared to other people, but God doesn't compare us to other people. He compares us to his perfection and nobody's going to meet that. And that was on purpose. He did that on purpose so that we would realize there is no way I can reach God's perfection. I, there's no way I can be good enough to go to heaven. I need a substitute. I need somebody to take my place and die for me and, and pay for my sins for me. And that's what Jesus did. God knew everything that was going to happen before he created the world, before he created time, space, and matter, he knew everything that was going to happen. It was all planned out, his reaction, so that we would have free will. If you had no choice but to love Menon, then you couldn't love her. Okay, love is a choice, and he wanted us to be able to love him the way we love, uh, the way he loves us. So he had to give us a choice. And uh, when Jesus rose from the dead, and there is more evidence to support Jesus rising from the dead. Then and Jesus's life and him rising from the dead, there is more evidence to support that than there is a lot of the history of Greece that and that we study so vehemently. <laughs> well, at at some point you did choose. I don't have a choice but but to to believe in God to the point. Uh, to, to believe in Jesus to the point that that I would die for him. Now, I pray he doesn't ask that of me. But there was a time when I chose 
I am going to serve God and do my best to, I'm not going to heaven because I'm good. I try to be good because I'm thankful I'm going to heaven. Um, and, and, and now hopefully he controls my heart. Um, uh, the, the Bible talks about God, uh, Jesus guiding our journey. Um, there's, there's no book like it in the world. I can read a verse on one time and it means one thing to me and I can read it again. And even though it's saying the same thing and, and, and means the same thing, it will apply differently to another situation. Oh, she's hot. There ain't no doubt about that, buddy. I ain't going to lie to you. Manoa's a good, she's a looker. Um, but, uh, um, but yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things. You chose, at one time you had free will, you chose to love her and now you can't think it, it just you it just doesn't seem possible to not love her and that's the way it is with God when you choose to start to have a relationship with Jesus and through his payment be rejoined with God brought back together with God then he becomes part of your life and you just can't can't imagine life without him it's like your eyes opening oh wow a french channel and nice nice boy you're you you now are you just doing your lives in in a podcast style now or or is the podcast that you did something separate entirely remy Um, cause you're busy, man. And you got a full-time job. You put me to shame here. I am like, oh, I don't feel like going out and filming today and you're doing. Oh, okay. Well, good. I'm like, I don't feel like filming today. Blah, blah, blah. I'll sit in front of the couch and get or in front of the TV and get fatter. And you're out there working a full-time job, gardening, making videos, uh, podcasts, uh, all sorts of stuff. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, I am going to go ahead and head out because I am tired. Uh, and I just want to relax a little bit more before I go to bed. Otherwise, my dreams are, I get weird dreams. Uh, in February this year, my nightmares did not come in the form of nightmares um usually in february the anniversary dates of desert storm um i get and and sometimes it's in january sometimes it's in february sometimes it's in march because it's it's the same times and and the dates don't line up with the same times if that makes any sense um but i i had dreams about wendy and pa my stepfather uh and and that was just awesome that was great all right guys i will talk to you later if you haven't already go ahead and hit that like button that subscribe button that little notification bell so that you get notified every time i come out with new content check out remy and patrick and Darren on Thorhaven Farm and everyone who is in here. Most of the people that are in my chats have their own channel. Um, Tammy from Rebel Canners. Um, uh, and, and, and check them out, guys. Uh, the, you'll learn so, so much. All right, y'all. Have a great day. And God bless. Did I hit it? What in the world? It ain't hitting. <laughs>